Hello, my movie loving peeps. Thank you so much for clicking on an episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Let's dive into the movie news we got to discuss here today. Some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here is we finally have a writer for Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, giving us a better idea what we can expect from that movie. We finally got the confirmation of the three brand new The Strangers movies with a plot. One of the stars of Scream 6 giving us basically an entire chase sequence detailed out, even talking about Halloween ends and how I'm getting really worried about this movie. That along with so much more movie news, so you guys know the drill. Leave me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today, but without further ado, let's just dive into it. First thing we're gonna be discussing here today is concerning a live action adaptation of a PlayStation video game, specifically the game Gran Turismo. We have here the Hollywood Reporter saying David Harbour set to star in Gran Turismo for Sony and PlayStation. Now I wanted to talk about this for a couple of reasons. One, I am loving me just the uprise that David Harbour is currently having in Hollywood and everything he's getting ever since what happened to him in Hellboy, I thought we might not see the boy again. But not only is he getting this PlayStation adaptation movie, we also got a little poster the other day of him as Santa Claus for the movie Violet Night. Still waiting for them to bust out a trailer for that movie. That's where David Harbour plays Santa Claus and beats up a bunch of mercenaries. And with him also getting added to the cast of the Thunderbolts, man is on a rise and I'm happy for him. But the other side of this that interested me is one, I'm not even a big fan of Gran Turismo, okay? If you're talking about racing games, I was always a burnout kind of guy. That was my racing game of choice and Gran Turismo was just always a little too realistic for me, didn't really appeal to me, and just hearing, you know, David Harbour was going to be part of this movie, I thought, okay, just a typical racing movie, don't know what could be so exciting about that. They're going in a direction I didn't even expect. For one, they're going to have Neil Blomkamp directing this, which that is awesome. I think he's a great director. Still wish he would have done his RoboCop movie, but that got scrapped. But this one will actually be based on a true story that goes as, based on a true story, the project is described as the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills won him a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. I have never heard of this story, but you know what that does deserve a movie right there you're telling me there was a teenage kid out there who was playing Gran Turismo kicking butt every night and thought I'm gonna do that for real kind of inspires me to be the real among us watch out now I'm looking pretty sus and heck, they just announced today that up-and-coming actor Archie Matterwick will be playing the main character who learns to race car drive while David Harbour will play the retired driver who teaches him. So as someone who thought they weren't going to be interested in a Gran Turismo movie, I think this is interesting. I'm willing to watch it. What do you guys think? Something else I wanted to touch upon here, even though I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, Disney just went ahead and updated their release schedule for a bunch of their movies. I'll have here some of the dates posted on here. Just some movies moving a couple of months forward and back. Nothing major, but the biggest thing a lot of people notice is Disney has now removed the film Star Wars Rogue Squadron from its release schedule, basically making it so they're not going to make this movie anymore. At least they have no plan to for a long time. And a couple of things on that. One, I was never really interested in Rogue Squadron. I thought maybe it's a cool idea for the people who love Star Wars, but I am kind of surprised they would now cancel it or not move forward with this thing after Top Gun Maverick, that becoming a billion dollar movie and just breaking all sorts of records. Not saying it was going to be exactly like that, but you got to admit, you could have done something there jumping off that wave from Top Gun Maverick. A Star Wars movies with pilots in a galaxy far far away you could have replicated something really nice there i mean even at one point they went as far as to make a little promotional video with patty jenkins the director and whatnot now it's just a project that's disappeared to me it lately feels like star wars is just living on streaming and that's crazy to think about can you think long ago when you thought you weren't getting any more star wars content that star wars just lives now on disney plus i don't really see what their future is for their movies whether they want to continue on the main story whether it's a spin-off universe or another prequel movie that fills in a minuscule gap in the Star Wars timeline. I really want to hear from you Star Wars fans. How do you feel about Rogue Squadron not looking to move forward and what do you think the future is for the movies? Are they taking a break or are they just focusing on Disney Plus? Moving on from there to something that is definitely not taking a break anytime soon and is just pumping along the Marvel Cinematic Universe, man. We just got kind of a major update letting us know who will be writing the next Avengers movie. That is Avengers the King dynasty. It got reported that the writer of Ant-Man the Wasp's Quantumania, who is also a Rick and Morty writer, Jeff Loveness, will be the one writing the movie. And it's kind of interesting because this will be one of the first new writers on an Avenger movie since Avengers Infinity War. Pair that up also with a brand new director since Avengers Infinity War, because we now know it'll be directed by Destin Daniel Crenton, who brought us Shang-Chi. Like, we are about to get an Avengers movie that feels very different, very unique. It should also kind of let us know, hopefully Ant-Man and Quantumania is a great stellar movie 
movie for Marvel to want to put the shoulders of an Avengers film on them. Then again, sometimes that doesn't even matter because the writer of Ant-Man the Wasp, one of the weaker MCU movies I feel, got to write Spider-Man No Way Home and Yo, I ate that movie up. I think just as an MCU fan right now and how much the MCU is changing in such a quick time, introducing so many characters, trying to get to that Kang storyline, I just can't picture what this Avengers movie looks like yet. But at the same time, that does excite me. I just hope they can pull it off. I throw it off to you guys. How do you feel about this writer being in charge of Avengers, the Kang Dynasty? Moving on, talk about some horror movies here. You guys know on a previous side flick, I mentioned that there are plans to make three brand new The Strangers movies back to back to back. And it finally got officially announced and confirmed. And not only that, it's looking like a remake, y'all. Deadline here has it reported along with the director and cast. One of them you might recognize from Riverdale. Madeline Pesh, at least hopefully I'm saying that right. The story for the new trilogy, or at least the first movie goes as, the new Stranger film will follow Pesh's character as she drives cross country with a longtime boyfriend, Gutierrez, to begin a new life in the Pacific Northwest. When their car breaks down in Venice, Oregon, they're forced to spend the night in a secluded Airbnb where they are terrorized from dusk till dawn by three masked strangers. Lionsgate plans from there to expand the story in a new and expected ways with its sequels. Look, as someone who really enjoyed that first The Stranger movie and think it was really unsettling and then didn't really love so much the second movie but did like the atmosphere, the vibe, the tone they kind of went with for that film, I was pumped to hear that three new movies would be coming back to back to back. As a horror fan, you just kind of like endless sequels to a slasher character, especially The Strangers, but the fact that this is a remake means a couple of things because for one, the two movies aren't even connected. So in a weird way, you could say like the second film is a reboot because it doesn't really connect to that first movie. And heck, I wasn't even expecting these new three films to connect at all to those previous two and just continue to have the Stranger Mask characters. But the fact that they're calling this a remake lets me know we're probably gonna get a redesign of those The Strangers characters. They might not look exactly the same from what we remember. It could be more of a reimagining. But I think the most exciting part is what they do with these sequels, because they're saying here they wanna try doing something unexpected. That's where the fun can really begin, and they must have a lot of faith in these new stories if they just wanna make them back to back. I kinda like this trend right now we're having in horror, where the movies are just coming fast paced right away back to back. I mean, the Fear Street trilogy did that with Netflix, really like those movies. We're currently seeing that happen in real time with the X franchise because we had X Pearl which I just saw and I'll have a review for you guys and then they announced the third film Maxine so you can add the strangers to that list of horror trilogies we're just getting right away you guys hear about this what would you want to be added to this new version of the strangers and do you think they'll change the look too much something else I wanted to bring up here is talking about some good old Scream 6 I have been dying for more Scream news but with them having rap production we're probably not going to hear a thing until December maybe I'm hoping something in in October maybe like a little teaser poster or the official title because we're still calling it scream six even though technically for right now we think it's scream exclamation mark exclamation mark or as the Queen Jasmine says it but here we had an interview with Melissa Barrera who kind of detailed out a chase sequence we'll be seeing go down in Scream 6, almost maybe saying a little too much, but still really exciting. When talking to Collider explaining why Scream 6 is scarier in New York, she says it's like 20 times more mortifying. It's awful because you also see how in the city like New York, everyone is kind of doing their own thing and someone is screaming for help and no one will come to their help. She continued, no one comes to help them, you know, like everyone's kind of like, I'm not getting into that. So it's mortifying because you're chased by Ghostface, but you also see humanity and how that reacts in a situation like that. Anyways, I think I've already probably said too much. That right there is a kill sequence we probably could have all seen happen. Scream 6 we know is taking place in New York. Ghostface is going to be chasing our characters around in Manhattan. I definitely thought that was a possibility, especially knowing it's taking place around the Halloween season and everyone else might be in costume on the streets. If someone in New York is running from a person in a costume screaming for help, I totally believe that people would not help them out, would just look the other way, and that could be just so much more frightening because you're like surrounded by people that can help you and no one is helping you. That's also one of the complaints a lot of Scream fans had about the previous Scream movie, Scream 5. There wasn't really a lot of chase sequences. And the Scream franchise was kind of known for that, having Ghostface follow you through some dark unknown area and you trying to escape at every corner. It's nice to know they're gonna be adding that on to Scream 6. How are you guys feeling about these details for Scream 6? Moving on now, talking about some Halloween 
And guys, I am getting a little worried for this movie. Maybe it's just me, but I am seeing a drastic difference in the way this movie is being marketed in comparison to the way Halloween Kills was being marketed. I'll touch upon what I mean by that in a sec, but some of the new things that have been coming up about Halloween Ends that I at least want to bring up as updates is no, we haven't gotten a second trailer for this movie, and honestly, don't be surprised if we don't get a second trailer and we just have that first trailer and just TV spots. Because right now with Halloween Ends, it has just been TV spots galore. I'm trying to play them here for you guys, but Universal is very strict about showing you that stuff, so I'm just gonna have to show you the footage spliced without the sound. And like, I'm still unbelievably excited for this film because I'm loving the atmosphere it's creating, you know, Halloween Day, Michael Myers is out there. There's even this one great shot of Michael Myers hiding behind cobwebs. Really cool and fun stuff. We even got an interview with Jamie Lee Curtis that she did with Bloody Disgusting, kind of letting us know what the opening of the movie will be like. The opening of this movie is every parent's worst nightmare. This is a babysitter with a child on Halloween night that goes terribly wrong. It's so crazy intense and beautiful and beautifully shot and put together visually. And it is a startling and thrilling way to open this last Halloween movie. And if we remember the plot synopsis for this movie, it starts off with somebody, that is the character of Corey, being accused of killing a kid on Halloween night as he was babysitting, and it looks like that'll be the opening scene that we get for Halloween Ends. That sounds awesome. But to me, I'm just getting this feeling that Blumhouse and Universal are kind of just dumping this movie. They're just kind of unloading so much stuff and basically spoiling their own movie without really much of a care. Because even though this movie is still getting a theatrical release, to me, me, I feel like the studio is treating it like a straight to streaming type movie with just releasing random spoilery shots like this one right here of what appears to be Michael Myers going after someone trying to stab them while there's a pillowcase there when you can clearly see this might not be Michael Myers. This person right here clearly has a ring on their fingers and on the other finger it has all five digits when other photos released about this movie with the real Michael Myers clearly still has him missing those digits. You even have Jamie Lee Curtis kind of alluding to this other pretend copycat character. You know, in 2018, we planned, we executed the plan. This movie, this other character comes in that she's concerned about, but she's not thinking about Michael. And then Michael comes back. What are you going to do when Michael comes back for you? Because he is coming. <laughs> They even already released a featurette with just random scenes spliced in there. It's like, where is this marketing push? Why isn't this movie? This is your final Michael Myers film as Halloween. We know it won't be, but for all intents and purposes, wouldn't the last Halloween film just be treated like a big bang celebration? And it just kind of feels like it's being brushed off to the side. Maybe that's just me getting the feeling. I'm obviously still gonna watch these things with all the hopes in the world and hoping it's a great ending to this timeline. But now I feel like I gotta set my expectations back because it feels like the studio's trying to warn me that Hey buddy, we tried on this one. What are you guys thinking of all this marketing involving Halloween ends and are you getting that same feeling or am I just being paranoid? I could be. But that is all movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.